so hello my dear friends hope all of you are doing well and keep yourself motivated in this difficult period of time please don't go out unnecessarily and wear masks appropriately keeping yourself safe if you are new in this channel please do like share and subscribe our channel and press the bell button also for new updates every time so today in this video i am going to discuss more on the electric potential and the potential energy our first topic of discussion will be on relation between the electric field and the potential so there are two closely spaced equipotential surfaces a and b you can see from the figure this is a and this is the b on the surface a there is a constant potential both are the equipotential surface on the surface a there is a constant potential of b and on the surface b there is a constant potential of v plus delta v and the perpendicular separation between the two surface uh, surface a and b is delta l so it means the minimum distance between the surface a and b now if i move plus 1 unit of positive charge suppose there is plus 1 unit of positive charge in the surface b and i want to take the plus 1 unit of positive charge from the surface b to a so the work done must be negative because uh, so work done must be positive because i am doing the work against the electric field because the electric field is directed from away from the surface b and i am i want to take the charge plus 1 unit of charge from b to surface a so we can write that the work done to move plus 1 unit of positive charge from b to a against the electric field so it it must be the positive work done and the work done is equal to force into displacement so we can write is because the force is equal to charge times the uh, potential so it means plus 1 times e uh, sorry the force is equal to charge times electric field so it means the plus 1 times of electric field times delta l times this is the displacement means it means the perpendicular distance between the surface b and the a another way i can find the work what is the amount of work done it is the change in the potential energy so here you can see this is the plus 1 so q means q times v a minus v v but here q is plus 1 unit of positive charge so it means minus of delta v v a minus v b is minus delta v so as the work done remains same we can write that the magnitude of electric field times delta l is equal to minus of delta v so from there we can get that magnitude of electric field is equal to minus of dv dl is so or e is equal to minus of delta v by delta l so for a single point charge what we can know that uh, for a single point charge plus q at a distance of uh, position vector r at some point the potential is equal to q by 4 pi epsilon naught r so the magnitude of electric field you, what it will be like minus ddr of vr it means q by 4 pi epsilon naught r square so from e is equal to minus del v del l from this relation we can get to know that the change in the potential it means delta v over delta l with the distance is along the opposite direction of the present electric field because there is a minus sign so the change is, is will be uh, in the opposite direction of the electric field so what is the conclusion the conclusion will be like the electric field direction will be opposite to the direction of the decrease in potential where the change occurs maximum it means obviously it must be the perpendicular direction and the electric field will be in the opposite direction where the change in potential occurs and another thing will be magnitude of e is the change in potential per unit displacement it means the delta v over delta l so this is the magnitude of the electric field and it is normal to the equipotential surface so our next page is so we have already understood the relation between the electric field and the electric potential and uh, i have already shown that it is true for a point charge and also from our previous discussion also we can say that the electric field is like a vector one and it exerts a force with the presence of some charge which uh, stimulates the force so the electric field we can say it is the force per unit charge and uh, in another case in the electric potential it is the potential energy of any charge particle at that location and if we divide the energy by the charge of the particle we get the electric potential so we can write that the electric field is a measure of the force per unit charge whereas the electric potential we can write it is the measure of the energy per unit charge so this is the difference of the electric field and the electric potential so we can say that to move a positive charge work needs to be done when we are trying to move it against the electric field like our previous discussion so you can see from the figure suppose this is the direction of the electric field so this is the positive one and this is the negative one because 
uh, we know that the lines of force goes, goes from outward from the positive charge and in, inward for the negative one so this is obviously the lower potential and this is the higher potential and if I now want to move some positive charge from the low potential to the high potential the work is done against the field so it is the work done is negative and the opposite one if I try to uh, try to move some negative charge here from low potential to the higher potential the work done is by the electric field so the work done obviously will be the positive one so now we are going to discuss the potential energy due to a collection of the charges so this is the potential energy due to a system of charges we are now trying to calculate suppose there is the two charge one is q1 q2 and separated by a distance of r12 so you can see that we need to find the potential energy for such two charge configuration q1 and q2 it means initially suppose i assume that both q1 and q2 are not there I assume that initially that Q1 and Q2 are not in that point initially both are at infinite distance so and how much I need to calculate the potential energy it means from infinite if I bring both the charge Q1 and Q2 in this configuration how much work needs to be done so suppose initially there is no Q2 charge only I want to I bring the Q1 charge from infinite to some point at the point R1 so the work done is zero so initially for two charge when there is no q2 the work done is zero because from infinity i bring the charge q1 you can see from the figure at a distance of position vector of r1 from the origin so the work done is equal to zero because there is no presence of other charges so when i bring the charge q1 here it will produce its own potential at the point sub, suppose at the point p so presence of q1 produce potential at the point p what it will be like v1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 divided by r1p because this is the point charge q1 here at a distance of r1p it will produce the potential of v1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught times q1 by r1p now if i bring another charge q2 from infinity to at that point p so it means initially when i bring brought q1 initially there was no charges so the work done is zero but now if i want to bring q2 from infinity to at a position vector for r2 so there is some potential exist what is, what is that 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 by r1p and this potential is for the positive charge q1 so now i need to work done when i bring q2 from infinity to at the point of r2 so what is the value of the work done work done to bring q2 from infinity at the point of r2 is equal to q2 times the potential exists there so it means 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by r12 so this is the electrostatic energy is conservative as we all discussed before and the work gets converted in the form of the potential so the energy of the configuration will be the as a form of the potential energy will be stored in between the two charges this combination so what it will be potential energy for the combination what it will be u is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught times q1 q2 time divided by r12 so this is the expression will remain the same and it does not depends on the path how we bring both the charges q1 and q2 from infinity so it does not depend how we bring the charge q1 and q2 from infinity this expression will remain the same u is equal to 4 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught times q1 q2 divided by r12 now we can consider three charges suppose we consider now three charges so initially q1 q2 and q3 from this figure you can see so there is three charges q1 q2 and q3 in between the the separation of q1 q2 is r12 this is r23 this is r13 so initially when there is no charge there is three charges initially to bring q1 at r1 no work is required because there is initially no charge so the work done is zero to bring q2 from infinity at the point of r2 work done will be w1 is equal to q2 charge times the potential exists there it means v1 is a position vector uh, position vector of r12 it means the potential due to the q1 charge q2 q1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r12 now if i want now you can see there is there is two charges q1 and q2 now if i want to bring another charge what is q3 now q1 and q2 produce potential at any point p 
वन बै फोर पाई एफ साल नट किू वन बै आर वन पी प्लस किू टू बै आर टू पी इट मीन सपोज किू वन किू टू इज हेयर एंड एट ए डिस्टेंस ऑफ सपोज दिस इज आर वन पी दिस इज ऑफ आर टू पी एट द पॉइंट पी सो द पोटेंशियल व्हाट इट विल बी ड्यू टू द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ बोथ की वन एंड द क्यू टू सो द पोटेंशियल इज इक्वल टू वन बाई फोर पाई एफ साल नट किू वन बाई आर वन पी प्लस क्यू टू बाई आर टू पी Now the work done to bring third charge Q3 from infinity to the point R3. What it will be? The Q3 times the potential exists there. It means Q3 times this potential, 1 by 4 by epsilon naught times Q1 by R13 plus Q2 by R23. So the total work in assembling all the three charges, what it will be? W is equal to W1 plus W2. W2 is equal to this much, and W1 is equal to this much. So if I add up all the charge work done, so this much is this is the amount of potential energy for the three combination of the charges. So what it will be one by four pi epsilon naught q one q two divided by r one two plus q one q three divided by r one three plus q two q three divided by r two three. So this the work done is independent of the path similarly like before how we assemble the three charges. So so far we have discussed uh, that the potential energy of a system of the charges. Where there is no external electric field is present, so initially there is no electric field is there. Now we will move on one step ahead, where there is the presence of any external electric field. So now we will discuss about the potential energy where there is an external electric field is present there. So the potential energy due to an external field. So for a point charge, what we can see. So this is the direction of the electric field, external electric field in this direction. And suppose at the point P there is a potential of V, and uh, so I need to calculate the potential energy. If I put uh, if I calculate the potential energy at the point P, so for that, suppose we can consider there is an external field E is there, and it is not produced by the charge whose potential energy we are going to calculate. So the external electric field E is there. I have drawn here. So it is not produced by the charge. Plus Q here because I am I want to calculate the potential energy of the plus Q charge in the presence of the external field. So the electric field is not uh, is not uh, being generated by this plus Q charge. So there is some source of the electric field, maybe known or unknown. We can say, and the test charge will not affect the source charge. The same was discussed before. We have discussed this before. It means the test charge plus Q is very small. We have chosen that the test charge plus Q. This is the test charge. It is very small. So the potential energy I need to calculate the potential energy of the plus Q charge. It means at point P let the potential be V capital V. It means the work done to bring plus one unit of positive charge from infinity to the point P is regarded as the potential of the point. So the at the point P suppose let the potential be capital V. It means the work done to bring plus one unit of positive charge. From infinity to at the point P is and the, at the and the and the work done is capital V. So I need to bring plus Q unit of positive charge from infinity to the point of P. So the work done will be the charge times the potential is equal to Q times V R. And the work done is stored as a potential energy. So it it is the amount of the potential energy for a single point charge at the point P in the presence of some external field. So the so the unit will, of the work done will be electron volt is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb times 1 volt. It means 1.602 into 10 to the minus 19 of joule. So now we will discuss about the potential energy for a system of two charges in an external field. So previously it was for a single charge. Now we will discuss the potential energy for a system of two charges in an external field. So You can see to bring charge Q1 from infinity at the point of R1, the work done is Q1 times V R1. Because now initially there is some external field, so at the position vector of R1, suppose the potential is V, and it is a function of R1. So the work done to bring infinity, the charge Q1 from infinity to R1 will be Q1 times V R1. When we try to bring Q2 at the point of R2, work done will be against the electric field E. And also for the field produced by the charge Q1 at the point of R2. So to bring R2 from infinity at the point of to bring Q2 from infinity at the point of R2, there is two kind of work done. Work done on Q2 against the electric field. What it will be? Q2 
two times the potential that is there on the position vector of R2. So Q2 times V function of R2. And the work done on Q2 against the field due to the Q1, what it will be? Q1, Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, the separation between them R12. So we need to add up all this work done to calculate the potential energy for the system of the two charges. To find the potential energy of the system, we need to add up all such elementary work done. So what is that? Q1 times V function of R1 plus Q2 times V function of R2 plus Q1, Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught of R12. So you can see for the two charges in an external field, this is the expression for the potential energy stored in the combination. For more than two charges, it becomes more complicated because this is for the two charges. If I consider three charges, four charges, it becomes more and more complicated. Now we will discuss about the potential energy stored in a dipole in the presence of the external field. So the potential energy in an electric dipole due to an external field. So now I am considering the cases. Initially it is for the single charge. Now it is for the two charge combination. Now I will discuss on the, this is for the two charge. Now I will discuss for the electric dipole. What is the potential energy in the presence of an external field? So this is the dipole from the figure. You can see this is plus Q charge minus Q charge separated by a distance of 2A. This is the dipole moment direction from minus Q to plus Q charge. And the dipole is making, making an angle with the theta with the electric field direction. This is the direction of the electric field. So as we all know, this is the torque on the dipole. What it will be? Tau is equal to P cross V and there is no net force but there is a torque acting on the dipole and the torque acts in such a way that the dipole will be parallel to the electric field we discussed before. So suppose it may, uh, the dipole has an uh, initial theta of theta 0 and I need to rotate the dipole at a final angle of theta 1. So the work done will be theta 0 to theta 1 the integral tau external theta d theta. So tau external means Suppose I need to uh, put some external torque on the dipole and it will obviously be equal and opposite to the torque acting on the dipole what is P cross C. So the integration will come out like that theta 0 to theta 1 P e sin theta d theta. If I integrate it, 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 it will come out P e cos theta 0 minus of cos theta 1. So we assume that theta 0 is equal to pi by 2. So the potential energy is taken to be 0 at the point of theta 0 is equal to pi by 2. So u theta comes out to be P e times cos pi by 2 minus cos theta. So u theta we can write it minus P e cos theta because this term will vanish is equal to minus of P dot e. So this is the expression of the potential energy for an electric dipole in the presence of the electric field. So this expression we can come out in second method also like in our previous discussion in here you can see the expression for the uh, potential energy for the two system of charges q1 v r1 plus q2 v r2 plus q1 q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught the separation between them. So this is the expression for the two different charges. Now if I consider the, the now I am considering the case of a dipole. So dipole has also two different charges one is plus q another one is minus q. So in this expression we can put that w is equal to q1 v r1 plus q2 v function of r2 plus q1 q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r12. For the dipole we can put q1 is equal to q, q2 is equal to minus q and the r12 the separation between the two charges 2a. So this becomes the expression for the potential energy becomes u prime theta is equal to q times v r1 minus v of r2 minus q square by 4 pi epsilon naught 2a. Again you can see that the v r1 minus v r2 is the work done to bring unit positive charge from r2 to r1. So it means the displacement. So it means the displacement and the displacement what it will be parallel to the field. This is the 2a cosine theta. So v r1 minus v r2 is equal to the, 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 the work done will be force times displacement. The force times force means the charge times the electric field charge is plus one unit. So it means only minus e times 2a cosine theta and the minus e comes as the work done is against the field. So you can see that the u prime theta comes out as minus q v times twice a cosine theta minus q square by 4 pi epsilon 0 of 2a. So it comes out that minus p cos theta minus q square by 4 pi epsilon not 2a because that 2a q we can write it as p the magnitude of the dipole moment. So this term is a constant term therefore it can be neglected because it does not contribute in the potential energy because it is a constant. So the same expression 
I came, I come, I just got in this um, process also u prime theta is equal to minus p cos theta is equal to minus of p dot t like the same as before you can see like as before you can hear the minus of p dot t so my friends I'm concluding my discussion here if you have any kind of question and suggestions don't hesitate to let me know in this video's comment box stay tuned and keep supporting us thank you